Hello everyone, in this video we are just going to discuss about the pinout structure of AT89S52 microcontroller based on 8051 architecture. Let's get started. So this is the microcontroller that we are going to use throughout this video series that is 8089S52 and initially you can see the pin 40 is the VCC pin of the microcontroller and pin 20 is the ground pin of the microcontroller. Only using this VCC pin you can provide the power for this microcontroller. So we just want to provide a proper voltage source between 3.3 volt to 5.5 volt for the proper functioning of this microcontroller. So I am just going to give a constant supply of 5 volt signal from my power source to this 40th pin of this microcontroller and this ground will be connected to the ground of the power supply. And you can see the pin 18 and 19 or XTALC1 and XTALC2 pins using which you just want to connect a crystal for producing frequency for the internal oscillator of this microcontroller. As we studied in the last lecture of architecture, we are having an internal oscillator. We only want to connect an external crystal for the proper oscillation. And to these two pins, you can connect a crystal of range 1.24 MHz to 33 MHz. So these are the data that I collected from the data sheet of this microcontroller. And you can see these three pins from pin 29 to 31. So the pin 31 is nothing but the external access pin. As we studied in the architecture lecture, this external access pin is used for differentiating from external memory and internal memory. That is if this pin EA is connected to the ground or if it is given a value of 0, the programming instructions will be fetched from the external memory. So if you are using an internal memory that is available in this microcontroller that is nothing but 8 KB of ROM, you just want to connect a 5 volt signal to this pin. So I am just going to use the internal memory, I am not going to use the external memory. So I am connecting a 5 volt signal directly to this pin 31 that is external access pin. And this pin 30 that is address latch enable is used for fetching the lower byte of external memory. And since we are not going to use the external memory, we will be leaving this pin in floating mode. And regarding this pin that is program store enable used to read the external program memory. So we are not going to use this pin also and we will be leaving these two pins ALE and PSEN in floating mode. And you can see the pin 9 is the reset pin of the microcontroller and which is used for resetting the program in the microcontroller and which is used for resetting the program in the microcontroller whenever a positive 5 volt signal is provided at this pin for two mission cycles. As we know one mission cycle is 12 clock pulses and two mission cycle is 24 clock pulses and for the period of 24 clock cycles if you provide a 5 volt signal to this reset pin this signal will reset the program that is running inside the microcontroller and it will again start from the beginning. And regarding the GPIO pins of the microcontroller, we are having port 0 over here starting from pin 32 to 39. And port 1 is available from pin 1 to pin 8 and port 2 is available from pin 21 to 28 and port 3 is available from pin 10 to pin 17. So you can see we are having almost 32 GPIO pins which can be used as input or output pins in this microcontroller and all the four ports, port 0, 1, 2 and 3 are having separately 8 pins. So as I mentioned before this is the basic circuit that is required for proper functioning of this microcontroller. So external pin, I am connecting a crystal of 11.059 MHz and other end of the crystal is connected to 32 picofarad and it is grounded and you can see the reset pin, I am just connecting a pull down resistor for maintaining this pin in low state and at the same end I am connecting a push button, other end of the push button is connected to 5 volt signal. Now you can see whenever I press this 
button a 5 volt signal will be given to this reset pin which will be resetting the program in the microcontroller so this button is nothing but reset button for the microcontroller and you can see i am just going to use the internal 8kb rom so i am connecting a positive 5 volt signal to the eea pin and psen and ale i am just leaving it in floating state so this is the basic required circuit for proper functioning of this microcontroller and you can see these are the four ports or the pin structure of the microcontroller port 0 and it is located at address 0x80 and port 1 is located at 0x90 and port 2 is located at A0 and port 3 is located at 0x B0 address. So you can see this is the basic register structure of any 8-bit microcontroller. So in the previous lecture that is in the architecture lecture we studied our microcontroller is a 8-bit microcontroller. That means all the internal arrangement or the internal registers in this microcontroller will be in 8-bit format. You can see this is the basic structure of 8-bit register starting from 0 at the right to 7 at the extreme left. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. These 8 bits form one byte and you can see this bits from 0 to 3 are called as LSBs that is least significant bits and the bits from 4 to 7 are called as MSBs that is nothing but most significant bits. And now let's try to represent this P0 register in the 8 bit register format. So it will be like this right. So it is having 8 bits starting from P0.0 .0 to P0.7. So it goes like this 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and 0 0.7. So now this is the LSB data 0 0.0 to 0 0.3 and this is the MSP data 0 0.4 to 0 0.7. So we know the address of this P0 is 0x80. That means this pin 0, 0.0 will be starting at the address or it will be located at the address 0x80. And it goes like this. That is P0.1 will be located at 81 and P0.2 will be located at 82 and 0 0.3 is at 8.3, 0 0.4 is at 8.4 and 5 is at 8.5, 6 is at 8.6 and 7 is finally at 0x87. So this is the address of all these pins following the starting address P0.0 that is 0x80. So if you want to write some data to a particular bit in the port 0, let's say I want to write 1 to this P0.3, I just want to go to this 0x83 address and I want to write 1 to it. So this is the procedure that we use normally that we will see in the next future lectures. Now you can see all the other ports will be like this that is port 1 will be starting from 0x90 and it will be ending at 0x97. Port 2 will be starting from 0x A0 and it will be ending at 0x A7 and port 3 will be starting from 0x B0 and it will be ending at 0x B7. So these are the basic port structure of this 889S5 to microcontroller and I hope you understood all the pin nodes and the basic required circuit for proper functioning of this microcontroller as well as the addresses of all the port pins in this microcontroller. So see you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.